All right, guys, welcome back to another video in the series. Today we're going to be covering virtual bones. So before we get started, it's important that I discuss a little bit of history behind it. IK bones have been around for a fairly long time, whereas virtual bones were first introduced into the engine back in March of 2021. So they are a fairly new feature of the engine. And basically what it what it does is it allows you to create unweighted bones on your character after you've brought them in. These unweighted bones are much like the Weapon R bone on the Unreal Engine 5 mannequin and the IK bones as well. So they serve the same purpose and they act the same way as well. So you no longer need to constrain IK bones for all your animations. Creating virtual bones on your character basically acts the same way. They are not constrained, but when you create a virtual bone, it will follow the hands and the feet in your animation, but when manipulated on the anim graph, they will act exactly like unweighted bones. And I'll discuss that more here in a minute. So as you can see in this example right here, the hand is clearly coming off of the rifle. I was using no IK there. And over here in this example, I am using virtual bones to move along with it. Now the reason why I used this example was to prove a point. Because if I, was, if I would have set up my virtual bones any other way, then during this animation, the hand would have still came off the rifle. And I'll explain to you why. So if we open up the character skeleton, and I moved some stuff around here. Let me just reset this. And I will show the bones. So if you, if you noticed, on the Unreal Engine 5 and on the Unreal Engine 4, mannequin and on their animations, it appears that the IK bones are actually constrained to the hands and the feet, and they are, but that's more of a convention and to prevent these odd bones from just floating around in space and looking wrong. And it's less about their functionality because they're not actually being used, even though that they've been anim animated. So you'll notice that the virtual bones in this project have been created off of the weapon bones on, the, on each hand. And there's a very specific reason why I did that. And that's also the reason why I chose this animation specifically to showcase. And the reason why is because in a lot of situations during the creation of animations, it's usually the case that you don't want the weapon to look like it's a bone welded to the character's arm. You want it to move around and rotate and swivel around during certain situations, such as a melee attack. So when you do stuff like this, you'll notice that, that the gun is no longer pointing this way in relation to the palm of the hand. The gun is pointing this way. Now, if we were to bend the wrist that way so that it maintained that exact same grip on the weapon, then it would have looked rather funny, just to uh, be honest. And ignore this wrist issue right here. I did that because I wanted to uh, showcase hand positioning with virtual bones. So ignore that. That wasn't in the original animation. This animation was brought over by from Lyra, and I modified that to make sure the hand didn't come off of it. So anyway, so what I'm saying is that the weapon R bone that the gun is attached to has been animated in this case so that it's rotating. So if the virtual bone is relative to the hand, then that means that its offset is in relation to the hand. And actually to put that into better perspective for you guys, it's best just to show you. So I'm gonna grab a cube and I'm gonna drag it out into the world. 
and I'm going to grab a cone just in case you're not familiar with how this works. I want to make sure I really get this across to you. And so if, if I reset this, it's at 0, 0, 0. Its origin is the cube because it's been uh, attached to the cube. Much like the hand bone is attached to the lower arm bone and the virtual bone is attached to the weapon bone. So whenever we move this, we move it relative to its parent, not relative to the world. So the world origin is way over there. So we're not moving that in relation to the world. We're moving it in relation to the object it's connected to. And so if I move this object or I rotate this object, it'll maintain that offset from that object regardless of how I rotate it. The same applies to bones and virtual bones. And remember, I told you virtual bones, they might look like they're constrained in the animation, but they're not. So just to clarify that for you, I'm going to rotate this weapon bone and you'll see that the virtual bone came with it because it is not constrained. So whenever I rotate the weapon bone, it's important that the virtual bone is attached to the weapon bone. Otherwise, it will not rotate with it. It'll maintain its offset to the hand if its parent is the hand. In this case, the parent is the weapon R, and so when I rotate the weapon R, just like when I rotated that cube, it'll move along with it. When we create additive animations, it's important to realize that if the hands are offset, then the virtual bone will be placed where that hand is. And so when you, when you apply this onto an anim graph, if the additive was set up in such a way that the virtual that the hand is offset on the animation from the reference pose that you chose then there will be an additive on the virtual bone which will make it further away and so whenever you apply it on the anim graph the virtual bone will be extended out further and the hand will try to go to it that's why i told you all in the last video that it's important to manage your additive induced offsets and consider the context in which you're going to be applying that. So in the project we set up, I'll actually show you all how to overcome situations where you want to apply an additive onto a, a running animation that has him holding the weapon, but you want the body and the arms to still respect the additive animation without the hand coming off the rifle. And I'll show you a few techniques. Well, I'll show you one technique and the, the project will set up immediately after this. But just to recap, remember I, I told you all that additives are just deltas their rotational offsets between the animation and the base you chose from it. When you apply that to an animation on the atom graph, depending on the depending on the the orientation of the arm on the atom graph, when you apply those rotations to it, you'll get different results. Your hands will not go to where the, exactly where they were on the additive animation because you're only adding rotations you're not specifically telling it to go to an exact location. So that pretty much covers that. I was going to show you guys uh, these two examples here. So you'll see the virtual bone is following the hand with its offset, just as I showed you in the cube example. And you'll notice that the IK bones right here or where the virtual bone is pointing to off of the right hand. That threw me off when I first started getting started because I didn't realize that virtual bones, I mean, nobody, Epic didn't come out and say, hey, we just, you know, give you all an alternative to IK bones. They're called virtual bones. They didn't come out and say that. So when I seen this, I thought the IK bones still served some purpose. 
but they actually weren't being used in any of the cases which I observed to this. It only appeared as though they were being used because it just so happened that the virtual bones were in the same location as the IK bones. And that's because the IK bones were properly constrained during the creation of those animations. And that was for convention, not because they were actually going to use them for IK correction. So that's uh, pretty much it. I'll show you in this example, uh, the same thing happened. So the hand was offset relative to the other hand whenever we were making this animation. And although, although the, the hand is not actually reaching the IK target in this situation because we're not allowing stretching, we can't allow stretching. But even after allowing stretching, it still doesn't place it back where it's supposed to be on the gun. And the reason why is because, like I said, we offset the hands in relation to each other on that. So with that out of the way, uh, we are going to create a project of our own. And we're going to create an animation system that requires virtual bones for hand correction. And I will be right back.